I've always wanted to try my hand at 3D printing puzzles. Hello everyone, Chris here, and for a long time now I've been very curious about creating all types of 3D printed puzzles. I've watched content from people like Devin over at Make Anything and Angus at Maker's Muse. They've created some really awesome designs. Now there's always been one problem. I really don't have a lot of skill in CAD drawing. I can get around, I can get the job done, but when it comes to creating something like a puzzle, I really didn't know where to begin. Well, this Christmas, I received this little wooden puzzle right here. And here's a look at the wooden puzzle I received. Basically, it's a bunch of cleverly cut parts that get assembled that make it look like it's impossible to unassemble. In fact, if you do a Google search, you need some more information on this. I believe they call it the impossible flower. It's a very intriguing design. It's very pleasing to look at. And when I receive something like this, this is the kind of thing that I just can't let it go until it is solved. Now this one, it really didn't take all that long to solve it. The tricky part was actually putting it back together once you pulled it apart. But you might be finding out about that shortly, so I'll let that be a surprise. Now on to the 3D printing part. Since my fusion skills are somewhat limited, and I really didn't have a very creative idea for creating a puzzle, and not a lot of free time, I decided just to recreate this puzzle in 3D printed form to get me started with the whole process. So pretty much all I did was measure some of the wooden parts, jump into fusion, and try to recreate them. Which was a little bit of a task for me, given my limited knowledge of the software, but it did teach me a lot of things. One of the biggest things is, when you put something together like this, how much tolerance you might need from material to material. Given this original puzzle was made out of wood, you have a lot more wiggle room, literally. The corners of the puzzle start out pretty sharp, but as you work through it, they become round and it becomes easier to solve. Each time you take it apart and put it together, there's just a little bit more slop. But you're not going to have that advantage with a 3D printed part, especially if you use something like PLA, which is a very rigid material. So given the properties of the materials, the wood versus PLA, it really wasn't a one-for-one -one copy going into Fusion 360. I had to change a lot of things to allow for that tolerance of the new material. But all in all, it came out pretty well. And I ended up with this puzzle right here. It came out pretty well. Again, it has a little tighter tolerance than the wood puzzle. You can see them side by side. They're pretty much identical at this point. And it really was a great exercise to sit down and try to copy something like this. I learned a lot about fusion, and it gave me a lot of ideas how I could do this going forward. And it's not just the process of creating something in Fusion 360. You need to worry about the tolerances of the parts and your 3D printer itself. A lot of people are going to say you need to calibrate your X and Y. I've always been under the belief that you don't need to do that. Trust the amount of steps that that motor is going to put out, punch in that exact number, and if your printer is relatively within spec, you're going to be just fine. Now, you do need to worry about the extruder steps and the filament. That filament needs to be as consistent as possible for you to get the right tolerances and sizes on your parts. And there's a couple of different ways to combat that. One is calibrating E-steps. I will leave a link in the video description where I've done that in several videos. But what I'd rather see someone do is go into the slicer and correct it there first. This is the quickest way, in my opinion, to make adjustments to the tolerance of your parts. Maybe the filament isn't quite the size you think it should be. You can adjust for all that right here. So if your parts are fitting too tight, you can turn the extrusion multiplier down a bit. 0 0.9. If they're way too loose, you can run it up. I wouldn't recommend going more than 10% either direction, but every 3D printer is going to be just a little bit different. There's a lot of ways to calculate this. You can go in, do a lot of measurements on different parts, and decide what this should be. But just roughing it in, usually you can get a pretty good result. Prusa has a great knowledge base article out here all about extrusion multiplier. They give you some pictures. I'll leave a link to this in the description. I also printed a couple of example cubes so I could show you the difference. This is 20% less, so an 80% extrusion multiplier. You can see there's gaps around the edges, and the lines in between here, they're a little bit further apart. And this one is 120%.
you can see how that top layer is completely overstuffed. So when you're designing these parts, there's really no need to go through this painstaking process to get your printer just right. Just take a look at it, it's pretty easy to tell which direction you need to go, and then you can adjust it right there in the slicer. So some of you might be thinking this video isn't about 3D printed puzzles, and you'd be right. I'm hopefully using this as experience and a jumping off point so I can create my own puzzles in the future, as well as an opportunity to give you a few tips about designing things for 3D printing. So why would I take something just to replicate it in Fusion 360 and then 3D print it? Well, there's two main reasons why I really love 3D printing. Now that I've gone through this process, I can send these files anywhere in the whole world, even the space station, and you could print one of these out and hold it in your hand. And that just blows my mind. But there's another reason why I really like 3D printing. And that is scalability. This is the 300% version of this puzzle. All I did was scale it up in the slicer. I didn't make any Fusion 360 changes at all. If the model is designed in such a way, you can pretty much take scaling as far as you want. The only thing you really need to remember is if you have a small error on the intended size, as you scale, that error is going to get larger. So depending on your project, as you scale, your mileage may vary. Also remember, the bigger the part, if you have something out of whack on your printer, the bigger that mistake will be as well. So be mindful of that. So basically, I made this video as an excuse to talk about 3D printing and the things that I still enjoy about it after all these years. And you're probably thinking now, I'm not even going to show you how to solve this puzzle. Well, if you really need help, a quick Google search will get you what you need, or you could leave me a note in the comments. I know there's a lot of smart folks out there. The pieces to this puzzle will be available over on Prusa Printers. You can print it out, put it together, and then maybe hand it off to somebody else to solve. Good times will be had by all. Thank you to folks like Angus over at Makers Muse and Devin at Make Anything that make this seem really effortless, creating all these really neat puzzles. Hopefully this gets me on the road to creating my own designs. Hopefully you like this video. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one. And the sound, it's so satisfying.